and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us from Verse Online, pre... Previously and currently, the head, the headman of the Arcverse, now recently dipping into the wonderful world of mutants and masterminds with Nova City Heroes, the one the one and only, oh, um, Nick Shepley, how you doing today, man? <laughs> it's been a while. It's like great to years. be back. Yeah, it has it has. It's great to be back. Um, thanks so much, and uh, you know. I, I I always enjoy our conversations. Um, they they kind of range from the the sort of the, uh, the the minor to the major in in sort of these huge psychedelic leaps. So I, I love I love coming to chats here. I really do. Yeah. Um. Thanks so much for having me again. Mm -hmm. And you've you've been you've cer you've certainly ha you've certainly been going through going through a lot of different projects since we since we last talked i mean there's the mutants and masterminds yeah. thi thing there's the um audio version of arc lands that you've been going through I, th I think the first part of that is if it's not up on spotify right now it's close no um, it's it's there it's out first th <laughs> first three chapters of um a fire in the heart of knowing are available um, I'll, I'll send you a link through later, but they're, they're available on um, Spotify and all uh, pod hoster platforms um, at the moment. Uh, and we're putting out another episode every week until the middle of August. Um, and then that should be, so we should have 12 chapters in season one. Mm -hmm. And maybe a couple of others. If we write a few more in the meantime, we'll stick those up there as well. Now, for as long as I do... Um, for, it. for as long as I'd known you, you'd mainly um, occupied the 5e space. So it was a bit sure. interesting to see you dip into Mutants and Masterminds uh, with the with the yeah. Nova City Heroes project. How did how did you mm. first get, to, get tuned into Mutants and Masterminds, and what prompted um, the Nova City Heroes project? Well, a, a couple of things, really. I mean, I'd always... I'd always kind of been superhero curious when it came to RPGs. Um, I'd looked, um, um, my son, who's nine, um, I've been trying to sort of nudge him in the direction of, of, of the 20 sided dice for a long time. Um, and, um, so he, he's, he's like mad for the, the kind of the modern superhero culture of, you know, the MCU and stuff like that. And so I thought, well, it'd be a bit, a bit of fun. I'll, I'll get the core book and let's 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 play a bit. And then um, a sort of an idea came to me. I mean, I've I've always got this thing about um, creating D and D worlds, particularly, which are sort of as stripped down as possible. I don't think a D and D world needs to have a couple of hundred monsters in it and everybody having, you know, vast amounts of magical firepower and magic being so ubiquitous. So it's boring and you know, it's part of the everyday. I thought, well, isn't that if you create a superhero universe? I mean, if you look at, um, you know, the the Beyond the Mastermind superhero universe and uh, the Freedom City universe, um, the, this kind of like, um, you know, a, a superhero round 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 every corner. And I think, well, then things become. It's, it's a bit like the Incredibles, you know, where uh, Syndrome says, you know, one day everyone will have superpowers. And then, and as a result, everyone will be ordinary. And um, I thought, well, what if you create a world where that's not, not the case? Um, and what's happened in Nova City is an event has happened where 95% of the world's heroes have vanished. And you, you, the subtext is that, you know, you, that um, a lot of the world's heroes had reached that kind of homelander from the boys sort of level of kind of vanity and self-importance and slightly psychopathicness. Mm. Um, and uh, and so the people that are left, there are people with powers left, but they are the, like, the, the unknowns, the, um, the little guys, who 
wind up discovering a world um, that 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 the big the big heroes have kind of made, um, and something and I won't say what, but something has like vanished them out of reality completely, and the world is in absolute crisis. Um, the the world has built its Self around the idea of the superhero as the, the the you know the safeguarder of the nation of reality itself, and also the superhero is the, the sort of like the the agent of the state and the kind of the celebrity you know these toxic things that you know are you know something like that something like Superman should never be, mm-hmm. um, and so and so now you have. Um, the uh, worldwide crisis nobody knows what to do um the world is up for grabs obviously the villains haven't vanished it's just the heroes um and and so the, so that the, the the new heroes have to kind of navigate this world and the agencies that manage heroes have to start from scratch you know kind of blind panic mm-hmm. getting uh, any whoever is available um no matter their abilities to um, get ready to, to find out what's happened and to deal with the crises that come along. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first part of Nova City Heroes has got, it's, it's a kind of a core book with, um, you know, half of it is lore and the, the other half of it are, are seven interconnected adventures. I'm writing book two at the moment, which is, again, is, is 50% lore and another seven adventures. And then finally... When we do book three, there'll be a special bit at the end, uh, and I'm working out currently how to do an Avengers Endgame level mass battle, but not so that it becomes wargaming. Um, so it's like there is like a fluid kind of narrative pathway through it, um, but with extra extra bits where you command troops with and stuff like that. Um, so, which is is going to be a, a, the the kind of like the the big challenge. But I, I, I was thinking, um, you need to, to kind of finish finish something like that on a high, really, um, and uh, have like some sort of showstopper event uh, that will change the world. Um, mm-hmm. um, I mean, my my feeling about Nova City Heroes as I was saying to you uh, before, is that um, everything, everything in superhero culture, superhero movies, comics, what have you, is about big, you know, do it big. Um, well, you know, apocalypses, gigantic space entities that eat worlds, you know, dimensions, uh, mutants that kill sort of half the world that, that that kind of thing um and it's big and it's apocalyptic and i wanted to create that um and and give the you know, give the the players the chance to have something you know huge to uh to work through and it seems to be going down quite well so far you know the mm-hmm. the, uh, the reviews are in and people seem to be quite 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 happy with it mm-hmm. um and it's um if, for someone from Britain, where things are, you know, smaller um, and kind of less, they, in, you know, Britain it kind of life in Britain sort of lends itself less to to superhero culture. Though you know, people are mad for the MCU over here and and for um, other, other other superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. But it, if you're from Britain and you look at America as someone from the outside, and the and the superhero culture is a way of looking as it's almost like a window a lens to kind of look into um america and get a sense of what what america is kind of about um everything seems to be done uh, you know it, it's, it's about you know that idea of go big or go home mm-hmm. um and all you can do if you're not from america is do your best approximation of what you think all that is and what you think all that is about. Just as if you're from America and you're interested in Agatha Christie type murders, uh, you know, that thing that that quintessentially English sort of thing, or, you know, um, whatever these, you know, 
upstairs downstairs kind of shows like Bridgerton are like mm. you can look inwards into Britain and sort of sort of try to kind of get a sense of all of that but it's a you know it, it's it's probably a um you know kind of a, a, a bit of a lived experience in, in in the same way so you're, you're constantly trying to um uh, you know i'm aided by the fact that i used to obviously have taught history for many years and i happen to kind of have this very good understanding of modern american history so you know um when that sort of pops up like um as you, as it did does in things like uh the watchman mm-hmm. you know uh, you know alan moore alan moore integrated this sort of fictional superhero history with you know things like the watergate scandal in vietnam if you mm-hmm. kind of understand pretty well the how those how those events played out it's it, it's it's really helpful to sort of situate um because a lot of nova city heroes is situated in american politics as well there's a struggling Democrat president and um, a, a kind of a populist Republican outrider who is sort of wiping the floor with her, really. Um, and they, uh, um, you know, for, for, for better or for worse, they don't make any judgments about, you know, a, a, anyone's political persuasions, but that's sort of the, uh, the, the picture. And the vanishing play, this big event, plays into um her her troubles mm-hmm. um where you know people say you know when are you going to step up and protect this country when are you going to lead uh, and it's for various reasons as the players find out in the event it's very difficult for her to do that mm-hmm. um so it's a, that's a kind of uh without you know spoiler alerting what happens in the adventures that's a kind of like a picture of um um of what it kind of feels like um and so, yeah, uh, I, I tried to paint on a big canvas, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can certainly get that. <clears throat> but with the whole of um, of the Vanishing Saga, what are you aiming for for the um, power level range of that of those adventures? Are you going for the whole uh, gamut of of one um, through twenty, or do you have something else in mind? Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've got an open my. I start at power level ten for the first one, um, which is you know the, the standard rule of thumb for beginning power levels. Um, I've got an open mind about where we go with um, two and three. My thinking is probably you want to level up something like about three power levels each, so that. Um, uh, by so that you don't lose that that kind of um, level of chat that that kind of challenge and risk and danger. Um, when you get, I mean, what I didn't want to do is um, wind up having a kind of power level arms race where you know you you just you simply have to match more powerful players with more powerful enemies until you've got like you know fucking Galactus at the end of it or something like that. <laughs> and I don't, don't want to do that because that places this pressure on on storytelling. Because sometimes what I'd like to do is have players do uh, you know as many kind of non combat things as they do combat things, problem solving, mm-hmm. diplomacy, having to actually go and. Uh, resolve something with a the the abandoned teenage daughter of another superhero, where you know you can't use mind powers, you can't use you know fire bolts or whatever it is. You have to go and actually do some role playing and some thinking and, and working out. Mm-hmm. Um, when you uh, make your kind of uh, characters, you set your characters at ever ever greater levels of power. I think what happens is you it, it 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 gradually presents an obstacle to that, and I think you find this in virtually all all role play games where leveling up is a thing. Um, but of course, by by the end, without giving anything away, um, at the end of the Vanishing Saga, they're going to have the end game level boss fight uh, because you'd you'd be cheating the world if you didn't have that in there. So people are going to have to be. Uh, power, powered up. Um, how powered up at the moment? I don't know um, because I, I'm right. I'm I'm just doing the the, the writing, and then I mean, my 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 process is you plot the adventures, find a narrative thread that runs through them, create a kind of a picture of the 
challenges, the events, the the villains, the monsters, for want of a better word, and then write your first draft. Then go back through and look at, at hmm, if that's a power level 12 villain there, can they realistically take that on, or are they going to wipe the floor with it? And if they do, why is there a power level 16 villain you know, coming before that? And 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 then you 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 go back and you trash your own work and say, well, that that don't work and that's not going to work, and you move the pieces around until you've got something that approximates a kind of uh, a like a flow of events encounters that will be um, stimulating, spontaneous, different, uh, and not just different random different kinds of problem solving, but different kinds of problem solving that work within the big bigger picture of a superhero narrative. What I like to put in there is instead of doing like at the end of a Marvel film, Easter eggs at the end, I like to drop Easter eggs as we go through, have, you know, a a link to a villain you've sort of heard of before or another kind of meta villain that's going to be coming in whatever we do after the Vanishing Saga. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and kind of keep it Keep it like um, as as alive as possible in, in, in that way. Um, so it's a bit of a politician's answer for you. We'll be <laughs> saying, I don't know yet, but um, we, it, I, I've got an, an open mind about how, the extent to which we power up. Mm-hmm. And as a, to to kind of shift to kind of shift a little bit, and this is this was kind of one of the main courses that I definitely wanted to talk about. Um, mm. a while back in one of your in one in one of your newsletters, you started tooling around with the idea of of building your own system. Uh, yeah. Lar- largely out of frustrations, disagreements, I'm not sure what the right word would would be for it, but just um general frictions with the sandbox of 5e and wanting to wanting to do something that that accomplishes yeah. what you'd wanted what you'd wanted to do with things like Arclands in a way that isn't restricted yeah. by that um, sandbox and I believe you had also said yeah. the o, the OGL fiasco from last year certain certainly played a factor. Yeah. Well, I would I would say I mean. I'm one of these sort of nerds that sort of has kind of followed the history of D&D from TSR um, through to Wizards of the Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's sort of, um, it's like following the history of like a failed state, really. You know, <laughs> like that happens to have a lot of resources uh, where there's kind of a constant ongoing civil war and some mad dictator periodically that takes over. So um, uh, it, it, it it's... I think what happened last year with the OGL crisis was what you is what happens is if you are a um, a senior executive at Hasbro, you're not a a toy person or a merchandising person or a game person or an anything person. You're a money person. You're basically a guy that comes from Harvard Business School who looks at the assets and thinks, how much can we extract from this? as quickly as possible. Um, to go off on a narrative shoot, I was reading, and you, if you haven't read it, you should read it. It's a fantastic book. Um, it's So Easy and Other Lies, which is the autobiography of bass, bass player from Guns N' Roses, Duff McKagan. And he talked about, in the, he, talked, he said basically the, the average lifespan of a band is meant to be about four years because the people in the record company know that the band will maybe have one hit album. And they'll try. They say we've got four years to extract, and they may do a figure, you know, twenty million dollars from these guys. Leave them maybe with a few hundred grand each and a drug problem, and then dump them. And that's the mentality I think you get when you have somebody who comes in um, and looks at Wizards of the Coast and decides that it's a resource to extract wealth from. Now the thing about it is, if you if you think about a D and D game. A D&D great game is five or six friends who are friends first and foremost. Uh, or they are people who aren't friends, they don't know each other, and they get to know each other, and they get to be friends, or they won't stay together. 
once they've bought the books, once they've bought the dice, and uh, you know, uh, a little bit of merchandise here and there, that's it. The value they create is has is has no. You can't monetize it because it's all in conversations and imagination. And wouldn't this be cool? And it's it's it, it's a kind of almost in a sort of like a cloud that they create with one another. And there is someone out there. It's a large corporation thinking, if only, if only we could get hold of that and monetize yeah. it. And so, as, and so, so you, you carry on. I was I interrupted yeah. you there. I um, a, f- a few months, but some months ago, I did a post mortem video on the whole OGL fiasco, and I had. S- I had I had looked at the whole thing as wiz, as wizards trying to show to Daddy Hasbro, see, see, we can we can be profitable because a lot of people overlooked the fact that just before that happened, they were getting blasted in um in the media, especially on Bloomberg, about how they about how they were overproducing magic cards that weren't selling. And the Yeah. Little did we know that things would get worse on that on that front. Hi, Pinkertons. <laughs> we, it was a shock to everyone yeah. when we learned that you guys are still around. Um, <laughs> but yeah, gotcha. But um, but when, when but when I did some digging, and then I found out that the recently departed head was somebody who had a background in Microsoft's gaming division, and then there was that mm-hmm. comment about. How our players are under are under monetized, and yeah. that supposed leaked image of a D and D Beyond Plus, and there there had always been talk about there had always been talk here and there for years about trying to do a D and D Netflix, um, ig- ignoring the fact that whenever whenever Netflix of video games has been tried, it's ne- it's never worked. Um, and I'm including yeah. I'm including Xbox Game Pass in that it has that it, that has been a money sink, but yeah, what I what I immediately got reminded of was the first incarnation of the XFL when Vince McMahon was in that interview that went badly for him again opposite um, Bob Costas, and mm-hmm. Costas just ripped him a, ripped him a new one about the fact that he clearly had no understanding of football culture and i know yes. i know it's it's very tempting to 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 say oh oh the oh these people would wouldn't obviously wouldn't understand because they're just money folk the thing the thing is 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 that it that i don't think that tells the whole picture it is that it no. is that they are uh oh, is that you have a lot of people who because of because of how sh- because of how short sighted they are about immediate results and not being able to cultivate a a yeah. audience, um, they that's where that's where the real bad decisions come come in because yeah any anyone with any savvy would have would have said that messing around with a with a un, with an understood doc with an understood open source document that's been around for twenty plus years would be you might you would be um mass would be a massive pr nightmare and yeah yeah like i it was i remember when the whole thing went down i was asking do they not do they not have a pr division because that should have because or if they if they do they have they aren't pairing they aren't pairing their um they their pr department enough and no no the I do. Th- I do. Th- I don't think it's a bit. Of, I don't think it's a coincidence that the same week that they backed off, I end up catching wind that they were getting called out by their o- by their own investor, <laughs> who who said that it was who said that it was a quote unforced error to pull this kind of yeah. thing mere months before the before Honor Among Thieves is com- was coming out. Although, if I'm being honest, Honor Among Thieves had no chance because of the timing. I mean, it came. It came out. A, it came out two weeks. Not not two weeks. A week after John Wick Chapter Four, and about two weeks right. before Super Mario Brothers. So, right. so it so it was screwed. Uh, 
I haven't seen it yet, but I have. I haven't heard terrible things about it. I, yeah, it's you know, it's some not people bad. Seem to think it's quite good fun. Yeah. It's it's okay. I do think that trying to do a D and D movie straight like that is a bad idea. I mean, if you, I yeah. still maintain the true D and D movie is still Darkness Rising. Or if you insist <laughs> on doing a D and D movie, um, steal some notes from the Princess Bride and have it that people are recounting the recounting their adventure in an unreliable Rashomon kind of way. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's, that's you know, kind of how I would how I'd imagine it. Yeah, you know, someone t- um, someone telling the story of the campaign, then someone else interrupting saying, Bullshit, that's not hmm. how it happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean the irony the, uh you know the the irony for Wizards of the Coast is that they had this kind of immense run partly as a result of Stranger Things and also the pandemic, uh, creating, you know, people suddenly finding, you know, pastimes and things to do that they had never considered before. So you've got this huge, huge influx of new people in into the game. Um, and um, for them to to then kind of blow blow that up is that's it's quite a, it takes quite a talent really. But coming back to the point about what we what I'm I'm proposing, and this is just in the the beta of the beta stage at the moment. You've got, I think, what happened with the OGL is that it kind of it, it caused a fragmentation of D and D, which will, and this is the kind of the great historic moment in D and D that we're living through at the moment. This 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 fragmentation where you suddenly get people like Matt Colville and. Um, the uh, critical role folks with uh, dagger heart and stuff like that. Um, you've, you've also and got Cobalt the, Press. Yep. Oh, and the Homebrew Network with uh, Mythcraft. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's about I would say about a dozen contenders, and it is it, is this is going to be sort of like um, you know the, the 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 fragmentation of an empire now. I think what happens with what 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 will happen is wizards the wizards of the coast will continue to have a fairly hefty chunk of the market. I think that things like um, Daggerheart um, and Pathfinder and other you know uh, related products will will guzzle up um, quite a bit of the market. I think and I think wizards of the, I think Five E will never be as big a game. And I think it's, it's at the moment, as we stand at the moment in this kind, and this tells you about something strange about the kind of the uh, profitability or lack thereof in the RPG market altogether, that even with the help of Stranger Things, um, Wizards have found it hard to turn a profit. And that's, I'd, I'd, say, know, it's, I'd uh, say it's what, because of a masterclass in getting their own damn way. Oh. Especially... Yeah. S- Especially since pe- there's there's been a long frustration with the fact that Wizards has been extremely cagey about even doing new releases in the first place. Yeah, yeah, and uh, even more so doing new releases that are more player facing. I mean, what 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 do we what do we have? Vo- um, Volo's Guide, Tasha. How how many other yeah. player facing ex- expansions are? Are there and the and the expansions that are there are basic are basically just um, attempt attempts at cleaning up stuff that was in Unearthed Arcana. Um, yeah. Or or in some or in some cases completely butchering things like it that were in Unearthed Arcana. Yes, I'm not letting go of, the, of what they did to the Mystic. How they memory hold that in the na- in the name of more subclasses to try and make other classes into psychics including mm-hmm. the whole oh this the scion is just a wizard who casts spells with his mind no uh, yeah or and the um i mean the the kind of the the attempt to retcon the forgotten realm setting as well so um, i am a D man really and um so much of what was good about Forgotten Realms um, under 5e has, has been sort of lost into this, this kind of very sort of generic um, kind of uh, kind of thing um, 
but anyway, those, those are like the, the little niggles. Mm-hmm. I I think the what I what I think I would like to do is create a uh, a, a fantasy system that takes the the things that we did in our clans, such as spell forging, um, where you know you are able to make your own spells at special sites but it's you know it's it's slightly more complicated than just you know you now have the spell jot it down on a on, a, on your character sheet the acquiring magic's hard and requires sacrifice and all, all these sorts of things i i i what I, I don't want to make things difficult for difficulty's sake, but for the kind of the purposes of kind of narrative, narrative and development. Mm-hmm. Um, and when and and to help players to kind of to to move away from this retail idea of magic, where um, you, 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 you know, when you've got used to a, a wizard or a sorcerer or whatever the spellcaster is, and you know all the spells uh, after you've played them half a dozen times, you know how to kind of maximize the utility of the spells and how to very quickly trick your character out with um, uh, everything it's gonna gonna need. And that, that, that's, that's great in a way uh, because that shows that you know the, the player is learning the system. But it also it gets to a point where have you ever had an experience where you've been on holiday and you've been to the same restaurant in the hotel five nights in a row and you've eaten everything on the menu um, and, and then you you're, you're kind of bored. Um, that's the kind of the thing I'm, I'm I'm trying to kind of move away from. Um, and I think that the other thing that I want to um, kind of avoid is the um, the 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 the, po- the tipping point after about level ten or twelve, where your character is just too powerful, um, and all you're in, all you're evolved in after that is an arms race with the GM, uh, where they have to kind of throw bigger and bigger monsters at you, which you eventually learn how to defeat, mm-hmm. um, and therefore, I mean that's a part of where I think murder hoboism comes from, which is something I I kind of always try to avoid i've always the thought murder idea hobos that... are a symptom yes i would say that i would say there's a symptom of, of problems with um with with, the, with gming um and and also um where there's perhaps a culture in the uh, in in the game group um that is is perhaps maybe not very healthy for the game. I mean, some people might really love that, and that's fine. And if you do, that's cool. But um, it, that kind of thing, if I'm if I'm GMing it, that kind of thing drives me mad. Um, and and I think I'd like to move away from. I mean, I, I I want I want combat to be frightening, deadly, and dangerous. And um, there was I think the the, the role master rules from years and years and years ago. That you were were what Merp in the Middle Earth role playing was powered on. Whereas, it, you know, it doesn't matter if you are fighting a you know a, a, a goblet and you are a relatively seasoned warrior. If you're if you're not careful, or if you have a really unlucky roll, or the goblin has a really lucky roll, it it can kill you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're you're <laughs> really really nervously guarding your your characters and trying to arrange them in a kind of like a battle formation where um, they stand the best chance of, of, of survival. Um, and, I, I want my players, I want my players to be afraid. I want them to be terrified. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've <clears throat> from, from my own perspective, from my own perspective, there's a, there's a few things I've, I've seen that are, um, a case of a case of pe- a case of people falling into certain um, habits, um, like yeah. the the um, when it comes to the spell list thing, I do look at that as a artifact of the of the war of um, the war ga- the war gaming part of part of tabletop history because yeah. obviously 
the spell the spell casting that that you're going to do in a war game, you need to have a specific spell list. You can't really do that level of free that level of free form for the casters when you're dealing with whole armies or even squads. It's just yeah. it's that's that's also that's also why nobody's going to raise a fuss if you only have like four like four spells. Uh then then again, I do think that casters have been a bit um a bit pampered over the years, but that's a whole mm -hmm. lot, but um that's a that's a whole other story. The and when it, when it comes to the whole make when it comes to the whole uh, murder hoboing thing, <clears throat> yeah, I look at that as a consequence of the fa the fact that a lot that a lot of fantasy games uh, don't re don't really don't really put much of an effort into get into having someone be integrated into the setting or ha or more of a consequence of that setting but not setting uh, mindset mm. because I you rarely hear about a murder hobo archetype in in say Ars Magica or no. it, or in um, Vampire no and a big I'd say a big reason f or even um, Legend of the Five Rings and the big reason for yeah. that is well for one the theming with some with some of those games doesn't really work for it but also the, those games are not built for some for some sort of omni setting. Like you, no. Can, if some if somebody's playing Shadowrun, they're probably playing it in they're probably um, playing it in its version of Seattle. Um, if somebody's yeah. playing if somebody's playing World um, Vampire, they're playing it in the modern nights, probably in whatever whatever city they happen to live in at that t at that time or have lived in. Like if I if I run a yeah. modern knights, I'm gonna be running it in a gothic version of of the Twin Cities because of where I live. Um, if yeah, I, and <clears throat> in the in obviously in L five R, it's not meant even though it's leaning heavily into the samurai archetype. It's not trying to be historical Japan. It is being Rokugan. And yeah, I think I think it's a bit. I mean, a bit like if you think the um, the fantasy flight Star Wars RPG, um, you can't do murder, murder hoboism in, in in that really because the way that it's kind of set up is you either you're one of three groups, you're either uh, rebels, uh, smugglers, or kind of the remnants of the Jedi Order, and all three of you, you know, you're you're basically you're you're poor and you're on the run for the most part. There's, uh, there's also got the your... fact that you're in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, oh. um, yeah, absolutely. And so, the, so the, the the setting is the framework around you, and and it kind of limits what you can kind of get away with. Um, and so, um, so yeah, you know, you you have this this huge factor of the empire that you you can't go around killing everything and, and acquiring lots of treasure. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the way that it's written is kind of very mission, yeah. mission based. And it's it's. <clears throat> I've al I've always been very critical of the claims that the claim that people have made regarding D regarding D and D that um, you can use it to run any kind of fantasy. When in in yeah. when in practice, it's very much skewed towards um, towards this Western European pastiche. Which nothing wrong with that, but don't. As I've said elsewhere, don't be a Janus. Uh, no, and no. I, th I think, I think that, to I think, be consider the consider the most common framing de framing device for starting an adventure. The whole you all meet, you all meet at a tavern. Um, yeah, I think I th I think that along with um people along with people um just throwing just throwing their characters together the day of. Has has helped exact has helped exacerbate that. And as far as the whole um, high level thing, um, I think I did a I did a video talking about that. And I th I think there's a I think there's a couple of things. One of them is a guidance problem, and guidance is something I've talked about a lot in the last year um, on my streams. It's 
a case where it's a case where in my from my perspective um uh, the there's a hyper focus on guiding people in the new player experience i like i likened it mm. to an inverse of the problem that world of warcraft has had for the longest time with its raids because they're so hyper focused yeah. on making it challenging for the world first crowd but the world first crowd is a minority of a minority of a minority um that you're you're talking about the you're talking about the top guilds in, in millions of people um yeah and the pro the problem th the problem is because of that hyper focus on that you end up with raids that require a ridiculous amount of coordination and is going to just difficulty out everyone else yeah uh, in this in the opposite end when you when there's this hyper focus on the new on the new player experience once those new players are no longer new they're they're kind of left to fend for themselves yeah uh, it's as as blasphemous it is, as it is to get to to say to say something nice about fourth edition to some although i usually tell them if if they want me to stop talking nice about fourth edition then they need to pay me <laughs> <laughs> um they somewhat attempted to address this with that three tier system that 5e attempted to integrate but only half asked it mm. <clears throat> there yeah. there were three t there were three tiers hero paragon epic each of them 10 levels each of them having a different feel and a different scale and epic tier um having some implications about how about how to exit your your character or some good suggest some suggestions on how their how their story um ends once they become this let once they become this legend among legends yeah um there was a similar thing with scion where you're of hero demigod and and god and if i have to use something a little, little bit closer to the mark there's um there there's adventure conqueror king system where that Ti that title is the three tier setup that it has. You have that particular, yeah. you have that particular path. Is mm. the is the key thing here? Oh. Yeah, and I think that the path is the is in some ways it's the it's the problem. I mean, if you look at the um, one ring uh, um, uh, uh, Middle Earth role playing from three uh, D, um, you, your character. Are never expected to um to become anything like that. And normally, they uh, they re retire from adventuring because they, they that's they become too jaded with it, or they 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 become you know they, they experience too much trauma, um, and they there's a this sort of hope despair mechanic, um, or. There, or there are other ways of kind of retiring them from the game in a sort of like more slightly happier way, but that's generally kind of expected, and that's partly as a result of that. Partly, you know, flows yeah. from the the actual Tolkien books, and you know what what mm. happens when people like Sam and Frodo return to the Shire after the uh, destruction of uh, of Sauron. But the big, and big... I think there are loads of ways mm. that you can, you know, begin. Um, you have a beginning, middle, and end to a character, um, and not all of them should, ne can, or necessarily even should involve endless escalations of power. Because you know, because why? Um, how does endless power actually help the roleplay experience? How does it make anything more enjoyable or interesting? It can do. Power, you know, everyone loves it when their character becomes a bit more new and interesting and can do new cool stuff. But ultimately, the, the the operative word in it all is character. Um, if you carry on powering up the character on the character sheet, it just becomes the power engulfs the character and smothers it um, because because it does. Um, and at that at which point, you know, then you're just going through the motions with this kind of. Uh, godlike being um and and it it becomes dumb mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But that, I think that's the, the problem that has existed throughout all, all role-play games to some extent. Uh, and you, you, know, you fall in love with these characters and you, you don't want to be kind of parted from them. But at a certain point, we all got to, um, you know, we, we, we all got to kind of retire um, and then start something mm-hmm. new. But, um, but there you go. Mm-hmm. I've tried with, with Nova City uh, yeah. eventually at the end of the uh, the Vanishing Saga. What I want to do is have those kind of retirement options for the character. It's not, what I'm going to suggest is for the next saga I do, which is sort of mentally written in my head but won't be written for a long, long time, is say, well, start with new characters. Don't Don't have these characters as the if you want to write them as the legendary NPCs that will exist in the uh, in in the Nova City world, but start with something new. Um, yeah, that's always my my kind of my guidance. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's it's one it's one of those th- it's one of those things where it's an, I think <clears throat> I think a lot of um, there's a lot of habits that no, are... it seems like I've lost you there. You there? Oh. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry, Discord decided to pretend my mic wasn't there. Um, uh, all right. All right. Yeah, what I, what I was saying what I was saying is that um when it comes to when it com- when it comes to that whole integrated setting, you kind of had that with um art with the World of Arclands that um, it at first le- at first leaned into more more of a I guess I'd say fertile crescent kind of ad- kind of adventuring, and then yeah, and then with Book of Graces leaning a- leaning a little bit into more of a um a colonization of heaven essentially. Yeah, um, yeah, and the the point the point is is th- is that. In both of those in both of those cases, there's a there's a world to give things um, context, not just not just a kitchen sink. And when it comes to the whole the way the the way characters develop in a lot in a lot of games, you it's you have this kind of no man's land where yeah where they're where um they're not they're um they're they're growing more powerful, but at the same time, they're still they're, they're still like the random hobo, which and en- ends up creating a bit of a disconnect. I mean, I it would be tempting to contrast this with say, Gotrek and Felix, who ev- even the, even despite all of their deeds, they're still treated like nobodies. But yeah, in that particular case, it's because well, one's a dwarf, and they they don't really one's a dwarf and a dwarf slayer at that, who doesn't really care about accolades and the other well ended end up end up killing one of the emperor's royal guards so he really doesn't want to be seen oh uh, yeah and, and but that's that's one that's one case of de- of demonstrating that um uh, yeah but one of the one of one of the big critiques i've always had for the longest time with with um, D and D in general, and Five E is no exception. And maybe, maybe this is something you've um, taken into you're taking into consideration with that project. Yeah. Is that anyone who's not a caster, or n- and especially anyone who is more more of a martial based character, kind of gets the short end of the stick in terms of what they can actually bring to the table because yeah. they don't have yeah because they don't have the same level of versatility the yeah the, a lot of them end up being even even something like say a rogue is still somewhat of a one trick pony even if it's the skill monkey to end all skill monkeys oh um, yeah like the a lot of the versatility well, I think, I mean, is tied to magic yeah I think one thing have have had a good uh, attempt at, at dealing with that in that you don't really get caster characters. You get um, 
different sort of kind of cultures or ethnicities that they all have their own um sort of abilities and sort of um, interesting things they can do but you have elves who the elves for example i think the thing that they can do is really cool is that if there's undead around like ghosts or spirits they can actually see them um and and sense when evil is near but nobody can do what gandalf does Mm -hmm. um and that's not only in keeping with the with the the genre but also it's a kind of a great leveler in that um if you imagine having um a a hobbit thief versus a kind of elrond level elven elven wizard uh there's there's just no point in having the hobbit thief around but here there there is because it's a much more level playing field and i i really like that is there's a it takes a bit of getting used to thinking so no one can cast spells at all but it's like yeah but 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 they 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 can do all sorts of all sorts of other stuff and it means also then you're not in a kind of an arms race with uh, a monster's arms race uh, because there's, you know, they have to stay to ca- true to canon. There's only a fixed number of monsters that Tolkien ever mentions, um, and so you you can't necessarily create new ones. And um, the, there are, there's a very limited number of dragons in existence. Um, so you've got a, um, uh, a a situation which is is kind of powered down the game a bit, but. Um, still made for some really interesting dynamic role playing, um, uh, and 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 moves removes these imbalances, which it won't, I mean won't be to everyone's tastes. But then again, if you try to please everybody, you'll please absolutely nobody. Oh. Um, and um, mm-hmm. I... uh, there was a I always remember. <laughs> yeah, I so, I got a, I got in a bit was, of a th- you I, go I got in a bit of a thing on on Twitter not too long ago because. I had rem- I had I had then I had done a play on the um the line the the line um the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world that he didn't exist. Um yeah. I'd said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled in tabletop was convincing people that one game can run everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want that? Um, there was a thing I'll I'll leave you on this 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 thought after going Mm-hmm. Tell my little boy to come off the computer in a bit. Which is going to be <laughs> that's the the the, the, not, the non-fun part of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a thing that that David Bowie said years ago. And he said basically an artist invariably does his worst work when he's trying to second, he's trying to create things he thinks will please his audience. Um, and, and I think everything I've tried to do has been. Uh, I with art plans. It was an uh, attempt to re re com- re uh, re sort of complexify. Not even that's a word, but to, to, but to re kind of um, to change magic to to make it kind of uh, less retail, for want of a better word. And with Dover City, it's about creating big big dramatic stories. Um, and I think people hopefully will 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 like that. I mean, you've got to do a little bit of market research before you launch into these big projects. But I think if they like that, great. But if you go down the route of attempting to please, you'll create shit, basically. Um, and I think sometimes my guess is Wizards of the Coast have written sort of. Um, adventures by sort of focus group um this is my i don't know if that's exactly they've written true, by, but this they've is written my, by mem- my guess they've written settings by member berries oh. i can say that much <laughs> yeah yeah i mean storm king's thunder i mean christ there's someone had obviously read the bfg before they put that together um and i and i think that's that's the way to make really really piss poor uh, uh bland stuff um, so I'm always going to be attempting to avoid that wherever possible. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, quick plug. Yep. Um, so if anybody wants to um, uh, to snag any of the content we do, we give a bunch of it free away mm-hmm. at uh, entertheartverse.com. 
um, and I'll, uh, and also um, you can find Nova City Heroes on Drive Through RPG in PDF and uh, print on demand format. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will I will certainly be looking forward to seeing what projects you have in store down the down the road, including that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. But with that said, yes, yeah. I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. And yeah, it's been a real pleasure. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's great to chat with you again. Mm-hmm. You uh, take good care, mm-hmm. and uh, we will speak again soon, no doubt. Yeah. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then... Mm-hmm. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! Take good care. Bye-bye.